speaker, Professor Anton Zerashnov from ITEC, Russia. And he will talk about Archimedean Magnum duality and exactly so quantum systems. <clears throat> uh, well, in my talk, I mostly review the results I've obtained uh, together with Dmitry Libet and Sergei Abrizin. And uh, I will start with the uh, <coughs> basic example of Toda. Uh, theory. The reason why I choose uh, this uh, theory will be clear a little bit later. Uh, so the uh, Toda chain uh, has quadratic Hamiltonian uh, with uh, exponential uh, potential, with some exponential terms, and uh, integrability implies that you could complete uh, this quadratic Hamiltonian by adding uh, higher uh, differential equations, higher Hamiltonians, and uh, what we are interested in is the solution of this theory. So it's common eigenfunction for these Hamiltonians uh, with uh, appropriate asymptotic conditions, which more or less means that the solution is bounded. <coughs> uh, the important thing is that uh, the theory allows uh, the solution by representation theory. So uh, the eigenfunction, uh, common eigenfunction of these Hamiltonians, which is called Whittaker function, uh, can be realized by matrix element of principal series spherical representation of the general linear group. Uh, and uh, this matrix element uh, is taken between uh, vectors, uh, one of which is invariant under the maximal compact subgroup, which is in this case is the orthogonal subgroup, and other furnishes uh, one dimensional representation of maximal uh, unipotent subgroup. <coughs> uh, 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 this formulation uh, obviously gives you some properties of such matrix element. Uh, one of that is that it's uh, uh, basically a function on the uh, coset, double coset, which is uh, just diagonal matrices with positive franchise. Uh, irreducibility of representation gives you a system of differential equations. It's the uh, action of uh, some <coughs> uh, elements of the center, Cassini operators. And this uh, system of differential equations uh, coincides with the uh, corresponding uh, system of equation for the theory. And uh, uh, another property is that Whittaker function that has many interesting integral representations arising from explicit realization of the pairing in matrix element representation. <coughs> so with, uh, this formulation implies that we have many uh, <coughs> integral representation. Uh, the interesting thing uh, is that the same function can be characterized as eigenfunction not only as differential equations, but uh, some family, one parameter family of integral equations, uh, which uh, <coughs> realize a bust of Q operator, uh, Q operators for to the chain. And here is the explicit form of this integral kernel, integral kernel of these operators. Uh, and uh, eigenfunction uh, of this operator is a pro product of, basically, product of gamma functions. <coughs> uh, this operator uh, has uh, standard properties of Baxter operators uh, in general case, so it's a commutative family for different uh, uh, <coughs> values of the parameter it commutes with Hamiltonians, that's why it has common eigenfunction. It, it has a uh, degenerated form of the Baxter equation. Usually it has two terms on the left, but in the uh, case of this Toda chain, uh, one term disappears, and so the equation is very simple. <coughs> uh, uh, let me know that uh, for uh, affine Toda case, uh, uh, the uh, corresponding bus calculator was constructed long ago by Godel Pasquier. <coughs> uh, but uh, what is the meaning of this integral operator that appears? Because uh, we know that the meaning of the uh, differential operators which provide uh, explicit realization of quantum Hamiltonians is uh, just uh, the center of the universal interloping of the real algebra corresponding to general linear group. Uh, so uh, it is natural to expect that in this case we also have some interpretation in terms of group theory. It's indeed it can be done in terms of the spherical Geeky algebra. Uh, let me recall that spherical Geeky algebra is an algebra of uh, B invariant. Uh, uh, it it's, has two parameters. The group is some sub subgroup, which the uh, second group is a compact, uh, maximal compact group, usually. And we consider uh, the algebra of B invariant, K B invariant functions 
on the group uh, which acts on conval by convolution on the space of the car left left invariant functions on G. It's explicit formula is quite standard. Uh, the matrix element representation of the Whittaker function implies that we have the action of the spherical Gierke algebra on uh, the Whittaker function. And uh, it is a theorem which we prove that uh, the action uh, of the very simple and natural family of Kabelina functions, uh, which is basically uh, has Gaussian form on the Whittaker matrix element, uh, descends to the integral operator, which was on the previous uh, slide uh, with the right eigenvalue. <coughs> so uh, uh, the lesson is here actually that uh, Baxter operator in this particular example uh, has very nice uh, representation theory interpretation and we believe that it, has a, it is a general phenomenon of course. It should have the same interpretation in any case. <coughs> but uh, in this case you, you can give uh, very explicit formulas all this stuff. Uh, but uh, it's not the whole uh, story about uh, this operator. And uh, to put it in the right context, uh, one should uh, look at the other fields, uh, non archimedean fields, which are obtained by completing the rational numbers. Uh, one completion is uh, well known real numbers, but there are a lot of others. And uh, to define them, uh, one should uh, formulate norms uh, or exponential relations on. Uh, rational or integer numbers. Here the standard uh, properties of norms, but uh, we have options. Uh, uh, we have uh, Archimedean norms, which is triangle, satisfy triangle relation, and we have non-Archimedean norms, which satisfy more strong relation. Uh, so for each prime number, we have non-Archimedean uh, norm, which is uh, just e to the power, uh, integer power, and uh, Archimedean norm is given by the standard absolute value. And the fact is that uh, each norm defines a completion of rational numbers. Uh, completion of the Archimedean gives you real numbers. And completion with respect to non-Archimedean norms gives you uh, periodic rational numbers and, uh, as a special case, periodic integer numbers, which uh, are part of rationals, uh, which uh, may be represented as infinite series. Formal inferences. Uh, so, in fact, uh, the fact that uh, um, uh, completions associated with prime numbers and uh, real numbers exhausts all completions of the rational numbers is, for example, manifested in the simple product formula. So, that for the uh, rational number, the product of all norms uh, is 1. Uh, this is a geometric. Uh, it has a nice geometric analog. It says a sum of residues in homomorphic one form on a complex surface vanishes. But uh, there is a much more complicated example of global relation, uh, which is given by analytic annihilation of the Riemann zeta function. And uh, if we add some multiple, multiply uh, zeta function on uh, basically on gamma function, uh, we have a very simple analytic continuation relation. So some kind of inversion. <coughs> and uh, it's easy to note, notice that uh, this completed zeta function is the product of uh, all completions of uh, rational numbers. So it's a very simple uh, structural form. Uh, moreover, it means that uh, if we identify uh, multipliers associated with the prime numbers with the completions, the non-Archimedian completions, the remaining part should be identified with the contribution of uh, real numbers. So uh, this transcendental factor determined by global properties, by analytical continuation of zeta function, uh, is associated with the Archimedean norm. And so it's, a, it's very complex, but it's associated with real numbers. It's, it's not clear quite it's so. But uh, the form of Baxter operator, which more or less the product of these guys, implies that uh, Baxter operator for Marino should be somehow uh, inserted in this grand picture of zeta functions at their generalizations. Uh, the proper generalization in our case is the L functions. Uh, it's uh, uh, some kind of generalization of Riemann zeta function. 
so uh, L functions uh, have the, the basic property of the two functions, so uh, they allow product decomposition uh, over uh, completion of uh, rational numbers and uh, analytic continuation governed by functional equation. Uh, local factors which uh, enter this product decomposition corresponding to prime uh, primes can be constructed uh, in two ways. Uh, the one way is uh, very clear. It uses representation theory of general linear group over, over the periodic numbers. Uh, so we consider spherical principle series representations uh, realized in the space of the functions on the faucet uh, and uh, the spherical gate algebra, uh, this time for the uh, non Archimedean uh, base field, uh, where the uh, role of the compact subgroup plays the general linear group uh, of matrices over the uh, integer periodic numbers, uh, is given by B invariant functions. It's, of course, it's X on the functions on this faucet. <coughs> uh, so, uh, how we construct it? Uh, the spherical Geeky algebra, it's a known fact, is commutative algebra is amorphic to a uh, representation ring for general linear group, complex linear group. It's a ring of algebraic characters or finite dimensional characters. We doesn't, don't bother about unitarity anymore. And uh, Geeky algebra, spherical Geeky algebra, acts on the principal series represent in the principal series representations. Uh, uh, and because of its structure, uh, it's just multiplication by character. In reduced surface nature, just multiplication uh, by character of the Geeky algebra. And uh, thus, it defines a conjugacy class in the, gen uh, in the general linear group. Uh, then, uh, local non Archimedean L factor associated with this uh, pr uh, principal series representation is basically given by inverse characteristic polynomial of any representative of yeah. this uh, conjugacy class. Uh, the interesting fact that uh, there is another construction of Gaminian L factors, and uh, it's allowed to different construction via uh, L plus one dimensional complex representation of the Galois group of uh, non archimedean field. Uh, the Galois group is not is uh, rather involved object, but uh, for our case, we are interested in non-ramified extensions, and the relevant Galois group is basically generated by one element, for Fropenius homomorphism. Uh, and uh, so, uh, if we uh, would like to consider representations of Galois group, we just uh, should pick an image of this uh, Fropenius homomorphism. So, basically, again, associated local non factor is constructed using this sim simple conjugacy class image of the Fropenius element, and it's given the same form. Uh, the fact that uh, the two constructions give the same set of L functions is very deep. It is the subject of non archimedean Lindlen's duality. Uh, now we define non archimedean Whittaker function, which is uh, basically mimic uh, the construction of the Archimedean case. So we consider matrices <coughs> elements of the principal series spherical representations. Uh, it is defined by restriction on the uh, subset of diagonal matrices, which is now is just uh, diagonal elements as powers of p, in, inter, integer powers of p. And uh, uh, the analog of the asymptotic condition in this case is a vanishing outside the principal domain. Uh, again, in this case, one can construct uh, one parameter family of spherical, element, uh, spherical geometric algebra elements, which acts on Whittaker function by multiplication on the local non archimedean factor. So it's uh, worse, more or less, like in Archimedean case. Uh, <clears throat> but there is much more uh, than this analogy uh, in non-Archimedean case. We have a remarkable shintani kasselman shalika formula. Uh, according to this formula, the non-Archimedean function can be represented as a character of finite dimensional irreducible representation of general linear group of the complex case. And it takes, uh, we, we take the character of the element of this general group, which is precisely uh, the image of the Frobenius element. And uh, you see that it's a very interesting formula because in somehow it interchanges in spectral and um, uh, coordinate parameters. And uh, it's uh, maybe the best formulation of the uh, Langlands duality because it doesn't use uh, Geeky algebra or anything else, because it says that something defined in terms of the 
uh, representations of non-Archimedean groups, some principal uh, serious representations, left-hand side, at the same time, is the character of the corresponding element of the Frobenius, uh, image of Frobenius element. So uh, these two sides and the equivalence is uh, precisely the manifestation of the non-Archimedean Lenglen's duality. So it's very deep formal, actually. <clears throat> uh, now it is interesting to point out that traditional construction of the Archimedean counterparts, uh, so Archimed local Archimedean L factors, uh, differs essentially from non-Archimedean counterparts. Uh, one uses the action of the center of universal, universal algebra, it's kind of differential operators we, we start uh, with, uh, in principle, series representations. This defines a conjugacy class in the Lie algebra, uh, and uh, we choose uh, diagonal, diagonal representation and uh, write uh, the local Archimedean factor uh, in terms of some transcendental formula, some product of gamma functions uh, of elements of, of this diagonal uh, matrix is shifted by parameter S. So it's uh, quite artificial, actually. And uh, one of the main points uh, was that uh, the Baxter operator formalism uh, makes all this quite uniform, because Archimedean factor coincides with the Baxter, Baxter operator eigenvalue. So the total chain Baxter reconstructions provides description of local Archimedean L factors uh, precisely the same as non-Archimedean ones. And this is a uh, big advancement, because if you take pick any book on number theory, uh, you see the construction number, one, uh, you see one construction for non-Archimedean case and quite another construction for Archimedean one. But using Baxter operator formalism, we make it uniform. It's very nice, of course. <clears throat> Uh, but what about the second construction? Uh, uh, Archimedean analog of the second construction in terms of representation of Gal group is purely ad hoc. It's even worse situation with just putting gamma functions there. Because uh, for spherical principal series representations, one should consider as a, some kind of Galois group of real numbers, a uh, multiplicative uh, group of positive real numbers. It is. Uh, I, I wanted some discussion of topology here, so didn't distinguish wild group and Galois group and all that. Uh, and uh, this should be compared with naive or, or standard Galois group, which is just Z2. Uh, and in this case, uh, this Z2 X trivial. So, uh, so this is something very counterintuitive. Of course. And uh, the appearance of this group is enigmatic and deep nature of the relevant uh, Archimedean correspondence is actually unclear, conceptual, not formal. Uh, and uh, one of the steps towards understanding of this uh, second construction's relation with the first construction uh, should be uh, finding Shintanikis in Man Sharika formal because it encompasses the uh, less duality in the most concise way. And such analog indeed can be constructed using Q lattice interpolation of the Archimedean and non Archimedean analytical function. So uh, we uh, consider Q lattice uh, to the chain, uh, which now uh, defined in terms of the system of mutually commuting difference equations. Uh, <coughs> the eigen uh, function should vanish outside the domain. This is analog of the non Archimedean case. And the first non trivial difference uh, Gamertonian is uh, on the screen. <coughs> uh, <coughs> just a brief comment that uh, just like uh, the standard case uh, will present uh, the solution of this problem in terms of matrix elements uh, in some representation theory of general groups, uh, Q-lattice Whittaker function also allows this interpretation either in terms of quantum groups or Akin Katz multi -algebra. But uh, we need uh, only the, the result here. Uh, again, we uh, constructed the uh, Q analog of the Baxter operator, so there's uh, some integral operator here, or difference operator, uh, with the uh, eigen uh, functions which predictably are given by Q gamma, product of Q gamma factors. Uh, and this is important result. This is an explicit solution uh, of the Q uh, lattice to the chain. Uh, the importance of this is that uh, it's structure. 
which because its structure allows to define shantani kasirman shalik co analog of the shantani kasirman shalik formula. The structure easily gives you the representation of the Q uh, lattice Whittaker function as some character, some trace of uh, uh, some simple operator over some vector uh, uh, vector field which is, uh, has a natural action of C star and general Lee group. Uh, and a little bit different uh, representation which more or less qualifies uh, the structure of this uh, vector space. But uh, this is the analog of the shantani kasirman shalika formula. But now we would like to interpret the various terms which appear here, of course. Uh, uh, so what is the structure of this? Uh, let me start with the uh, modified case. We, index f, it means that this vector space is finite. It can be identified with the uh, zero-level quantum affinity algebra model uh, obtained by fusion of elementary models. And uh, again, this provides uh, two realizations, two cohomolog cohomological realizations of this vector space. One is the uh, de Masur model of affinity algebra, it's the uh, level k equal one. And uh, this means that uh, this space is naturally zero cohomology of a long bundle on, on some computification of affine Schubert cell. Uh, so it's some kind of cohomology of Cartesian shifts, but uh, it's. Uh, uh, this type of object. And another type of object is different. Uh, it's uh, direct sum of the Durham cohomology of group, uh, uh, cohomology groups of appropriate collection of modular space of graded clear representations. The last fact follows from the Nakajima result section. Uh, uh, to compare with the previous case, here we uh, realize in terms of the cohomology with constant coefficients, so it's constructible case. So these two uh, realizations are essentially different. Uh, the same type of realizations uh, can be uh, uh, found for the vector sp original vector space. In the first case, is a, uh, it's a limiting construction. It's a limit of uh, zero cohomology of line bundles of uh, some family of slightly extended compactified, compactified uh, modular spaces of uh, holomorphic maps, space of holomorphic maps of uh, P1 to the corresponding flux space. Uh, the corresponding computification is a Greenfield quasi map construction, and uh, this slight extension allows you to uh, define uh, some index set. And taking this uh, index set to infinity uh, allows you to reproduce the space V. So, so formally, V is a zero cohomology of, of some line bundle on some infinite dimensional space. But uh, the precise form of this uh, is the limited case. And more or less the same type of uh, constructions works uh, in the Durham setting. So uh, let me give you examples to, 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 to understand what it means. So uh, the simplest non trivial case is the uh, GA2 Whittaker function. So uh, the complex space of degree D homomorphic maps uh, is just uh, the space of quasi maps, is just a projective space. And uh, it has uh, action of C1, which is the rotation of first P1, is two fixed point north and south pole. And you have uh, action of U2 on the second, on the target uh, P1. And so uh, we have, have a character. And the simple check is that Whittaker function is just this limit. So we have a control uh, what is uh, this uh, infinite dimensional vector space representation is here. And realization in terms of the rank of homology uses uh, the classifying spaces of unitary groups and it's uh, in terms of Poincare polynomials for this stuff. So, uh, so let Q lattice Whittaker function interpolates a non Archimedean Whittaker function associated with the general linear group by taking Q to zero and the classical Whittaker function associated with the uh, general linear group of uh, real numbers by taking appropriate limit Q to one. Uh, at uh, non-Archimedean limit, uh, Q lattice Shantani Kasselman Shalika formula, which we define, uh, reduces to non-Archimedean one. So it's it, it, indeed re, uh, some generalization of this stuff. Uh, but now we have opportunity to take another limit, limit and infer what is the Archimedean substitute of the trace type representation. So recover Archimedean analog of Shantani Kasselman Shalika formula. Uh, 
uh, the simple remark is that Shantani Kisilman Shalito formula uh, defines activity real function as the limit of, limit of partition functions of quantum systems obtained by quantization of the underlying symplectic spaces. <coughs> so the limit Q to uh, 1 actually uh, reproduces the classical vertical function as the classical limit of the quantum mechanical system, which implies that it is given by the, some analytic continuation of the limit of the equivalent symplectic volume. We know that partition function is a classical limit, more or less the, uh, the symplectic volume of the phase space. And equivalent means that you could control uh, the dependence on Hamiltonian. Uh, so, uh, this formula gives you uh, simplifi simplification of the classical Whittaker function uh, that shall be considered as a substitute of the categorification of the q lattice, -lattice Whittaker function given by Shantani Kasselman Shalika formula. Uh, I recall that categorification is usually a replacement of function as a sum shift so that taking a, a trace of Rabinius uh, pointwise gives you back this function. And this is the same uh, story with Shanta classical Shantani Kasselman Shalito formula. It is a classical example of categorification of the special function in non Archimedean work. Now we know that uh, in the classical case, we shouldn't expect categorification, but it's actually simplification as a limit. So we have not the trace, but uh, the symplectic volume. But uh, it, it has the same meaning and works uh, nice. <clears throat> How it works again? Uh, so in the same example, uh, what is going on? We, uh, the volume, the equivalent volume, uh, can be represented as uh, some integral, contour integral actually, with the denominator, which is given by the product for final d. And now taking d to infinity is easy. We, uh, using zeta function regularization to, to replace this uh, inverse product by gamma functions. And we obtain the standard main and balance integral representation from textbook. That's how we indeed obtain at the infinity of d, uh, to, inf d to infinity limit uh, the classical Whittaker function. So it works nice. Uh, but uh, taking limit is not nice, at least for the people with physical, theoretical physics on the ground. So uh, the space of uh, this finite dimensional space uh, for uh, d to infinity might be considered as algebraic approximation of the space of homomorphic maps of the disk. Uh, and indeed, uh, what happens for if we take, for example, p1 to p1, we have a degree of this map. But when we take degree to infinity, we should have something which don't have topological characterization. It's natural that it's uh, a disk. Uh, but it can be made quite precise. <clears throat> uh, so actually one can get rid of the limiting procedure by considering directly, directly equivalent volume of the space of the maps of the disk uh, to the flat space. And uh, even it uh, looks like quite scary thing because it's some infinite dimensional integral, all the uh, uh, integral here can be precisely defined by zeta function regularization. So, this formula is, uh, has meaning, even in mathematical sense. Uh, but uh, if we find uh, infinite dimensional integral uh, somewhere, we should look for some quantum field theory behind. And indeed, in, in this case, one can identify this integral as a correlation function in the uh, two-dimensional topological field theory of type A, uh, which describes makings of the disk in the flux space. Uh, this theory is a variant of the topological field theory described in Gromov-Witten invariants. So it's a cusp, but it considers uh, two differences. Uh, first, it's non-compact, uh, but more important, it's a covariant version. And this gives some very nice uh, special features of this theory. Uh, so to recapitulate, the concise Archimedean analog uh, of the shantani kasselman shalika formula is just provided by topological field theory interpretation of the classical Whittaker function. Uh, now we have a mirror symmetry uh, <coughs> to apply. And mirror symmetry provides two pairs of equivalent two-dimensional topological field theories, and thus, thus two constructions of Whittaker function. One, which was described before, and another in terms of the landau ginsburg model with superpotential. The importance of this second representation is that in landau ginsburg case, uh, Correlation functions are given by finite dimensional integrals. 
And indeed, these finite dimensional integrals reproduces the classical finite dimensional integral representation from textbook. So uh, all this uh, quantum field theory machinery nicely fits the known things and uh, unified. Uh, below is a simple exa fine example of this mirror duality. Uh, you have two representations for, for gamma functions. On the right is the Euler integral, on the left is the infinite product, which can be considered as the uh, infinite determinant, so actually infinite uh, Gaussian integral. So we, on the left hand we have uh, equivalent volume given by the infinite dimensional Gaussian integral, on the right finite dimensional one. And the mirror symmetry in quantum field theory precisely identifies this. <coughs> But uh, now let, uh, let us recall that uh, non Archimedean Shintanic Simon Shaliki formula can silently express local and length duality. And thus, Archimedean analog, which relates finite dimensional representation, integral representations and infinite dimensional integral representations, uh, should be considered also as a uh, manifestation of the Archimedean length duality. But on the same side is a mirror dual. So we have a precise match between mirror duality and special models in. Uh, and uh, Archimedean and duality, all the calculations are quite explicit. So, uh, uh, another uh, uh, result is that quantum field theory for marine provides a good framework for description of transcendental structures arising in this case. Uh, but uh, it's not all because uh, we use interpolation, but actually we can use common degeneration. Both non Archimedean and Archimedean Whitaker function has common degeneration, which we call elemental Whittaker function, which is given by two limits. And this limit is very simple and very easy to formulate. Uh, 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 under degeneration, Toda theory turns in the quantum billiard. Uh, uh, and uh, the eigenfunction of quantum billiard is equal to the symplectic volume uh, of the uh, flux space. This is a very simple, very direct formulation. And we have, of course, analog of the L factor, which is uh, very simple. All gamma function disappears because actually gamma functions related with the fact that we uh, hiddenly uh, use infinite dimensional structures like mapping disks uh, into the flux space. This is the main reason why gamma function appears in the uh, number theory, which is my big view. <coughs> Uh, but uh, to complete the analogy, one can ask uh, what happens with the representation theory interpretation in this elementary setting. And the fact is that uh, uh, one should, uh, uh, indeed, this interpretation exists in terms of representation theory of the matrix monoid of a tropical semi field. Uh, the elementary analog of the local lens correspondence uh, thus identifies particular matrix element of principal theory representation of the matrix monoid of the tropical semi field with equivalent volume of the flux space. That is, again, very simple, very uh, <coughs> precise formulations. Uh, so, uh, uh, but uh, does this result have some uh, number theory uh, interpretation? Uh, the fact is that uh, um, elementary Whittaker function can be formally considered as Whittaker function over some kind of field Q1. I explain why it falls. Arising from QQ in the formal limit, P1. Because we, we see that all structures smoothly go in the, this formal limit. So there should be some, something which, which describes the base field in this case. Uh, what we know about this Q1? Uh, we know that it has a subjective valuation map onto the tropical semi-field. Uh, the standard uh, non-Archimedean field has a uh, <coughs> valuation map, uh, has valuation map uh, uh, with the image as a lattice. But here uh, we have not lattice, but just R plus, plus with the structure of the tropical semi-field. So uh, this is one thing which actually was used in uh, all these uh, constructions. Uh, moreover, the corresponding L factor, elementary L factor, uh, which is simple rational functions, uh, coincides with the L factors which were previously introduced by Kurakawa as L factors associated with the mysterious field with one element, F1. And the name, of course, is quite misleading. It's not the field with one element, but 
Okay, it's uh, some kind of this field. And uh, thus one uh, could expect that this F1 should be considered, should be related with this Q1. That's why this uh, uh, notation and uh, some, it should be some kind of the residual field of uh, Q1. Uh, and, and actually this is a some way to, to, to proceed with, with all this uh, uh, theory. Uh, it's quite enigmatic because uh, actually this implies that uh, the simple, some problems with the interpretation of real numbers, which we partially, of course, partially resolved it was because we don't understand quite well what it means, this uh, Gala group, which are plus and all that, uh, implies that we don't understand what numbers are, actually. And so these structures somehow to imply this. Uh, well, uh, let me give some brief review of uh, some other directions which one can pursue. So, uh, the bus operators in quantum integrable systems uh, should allow representation theory, number theory construction. And this means that this should work for, for any integrable system. It's, it's, it should be some universal structure. Uh, in turn, this provides a class of generalized L functions, uh, which uh, probably not known yet in number theory, not, not yet exploited, but uh, L functions with many properties we will know from the quantum integrable systems. That, so it's a large area to, 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 to work at. Uh, uh, the second point is uh, the obvious relation. It's, it depends on, of course, what your taste, but any, any people. <coughs> Anybody with the string theory background easily supported several things in, in my talk, which directs to, the, to this. Uh, so, uh, relation with string theory and uh, BPS uh, counting and topological string theory. Again, this implies that some generalized L functions constructed using BPS states counting should be in, in part of the story. And uh, let me mention that it's related with the uh, second interpretations of the vector spaces arising in the Q lattice Kesselman uh, Shalika uh, uh, formula. Uh, next, the identification of wave functions of quantum multiverbal systems with equivalent symplectic volumes uh, of infinite dimensional space should be again a generic phenomenon. It's uh, what we call simplification. Uh, and uh, <coughs> This can be understood universally in terms of the uh, representation theory of Geki algebras, or affine Geki, double affine Geki, and, and, and so and so. Uh, and this is a general construction which allows and identifies two, two, two parts. And uh, so one expects to have very, very uniform construction over dimension starting from the, the lowest level, <coughs> which to our mind is a uh, integral system associated with the tropical symmetry in gap up to higher dimensions, because the standard integrable systems with finite particle is the level one in this uh, uh, picture. Uh, so uh, the tropical semi-fields appears as a substitute of more complicated object, because it's a uh, uh, domain of the evaluation map. And this object, uh, it would be, be very interesting to, to understand what, what it means. And the uh, kernel of this map is large. So it, it's not uh, just uh, the same thing. Uh, so uh, it might be that uh, quantum field theory in general, or theory integrable systems, uh, may add something to, to this puzzle and to solve it. And finally, uh, the natural uh, next step would be uh, a delic version of box operator, because actually we know global L functions, uh, which uh, constructed uh, it's in some region as a product of the uh, uh, local uh, uh, local <coughs> a functions and one can expect that uh, one can invent the kind of box operator which has as eigenfunctions these global L functions why it's interesting because uh, the general philosophy is the general uh, the zeros of the box operator eigenvalues are governed by beta and that equations uh, in some theories with the uh, good vacuum it's uh, easy, but uh, in general case it's also in some sense correct statement. Uh, 
so uh, this links uh, the better ansatz with generalized Riemann hypothesis for global value functions because again uh, the statements about the uh, uh, zeros of value functions can be maybe formulated in terms of the some theories where these value functions arises as the uh, eigenvalues. In some sense, it reminds uh, the old uh, uh, venue, uh, it's uh, a <coughs> uh, Pavlov approach to the generalized Riemann hypothesis via scattering theory, uh, but well, it's, it's just uh, uh, one of the directions. Uh, so maybe I stop here and have time for questions. Thank you. Thank you. So you mentioned this interpretation of uh, uh, of those uh, uh, functions as uh, equivalent volumes. Yeah. Uh, what about the quantization? If you if you if you, if you look at the corresponding yeah, equivalent yeah. index. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> essential to go uh, backwards and say, okay, if we have a, a synthetic volume, uh, what is the quantum system, what is the meaning? Uh, it was already on the <laughs> screen because the quantization gives you Q versions. Uh, in terms of the topological field theory, it's uh, three-dimensional topological field theory. That's why. And all this works uniformly. Uh, so, uh, in some sense, uh, it's quantization is part of the story. Okay. Any other questions? Okay, then. We have for local organizer. Yes, a mystery box. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>